What's cracking, everybody? Mighty Smart Guy Matt Zapala here. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you the best biblical story from the Bible that changed my life and how I saw money, how I perceived money, and how I would make my money, and how it made me a first generation cash flow millionaire in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad for Vlogmas 2020. Happening in three, two, one. Let's go. So welcome to episode six of Vlog Miss 2020, where the YouTuber community is getting together that every day beginning December 1st to the 24th of December, we're putting out an episode every day to hopefully be helpful to you, uh, to share a little bit, maybe potentially some entertainment of how our lives are going besides just the typical how-to listicle type videos. But uh, these are some of the things that make us us. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you how the Bible has made a major impact on my life. You know, one of the things that I realized when I was coming up and uh, I realized that the system that I believed in, which is just being a good person, long-term wasn't sustainable because I'm flawed. And so before I begin, if you haven't done so already, make sure if you're following our business page on Facebook, make sure you click like to follow our business page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe. Hopefully we earn a new subscriber with these series. But every Sunday during Vlogmas of 2020, we're going to be placing a little bit of quasi Bible study from the money smart guy from me to you. And by the way, I'm not a pastor. I'm just interpreting the Bible just like any other person out there. I'm not a minister. I'm just your typical person just trying to figure life out and trying to surround himself with values and principles that serve him for the long term. And maybe it might serve you too as well. So why do I got this Bible in my hand. Why do I have these topics? Well, listen, uh, I, I decided to sp seek wisdom. When I started my career in financial services, I started reading the Bible. I started reading the Bible heavily when I was in the military. And then when I got out, I applied it because I was going through a lot of trauma, uh, mental trauma, you know, obviously a trauma of, uh, of just a bad mental space of where I was uh, mentally uh, post-military. Started diving into the Bible. And what I realized that if I wanted to live a happy life, a wealthy life, a prosperous life, there's values and principles inside this book. It's more than just, you know, your, your typical stories that you hear at Christmas time and Santa Claus and Christmas time, hallelujah type stuff. No, there's rules and, and laws here that transcend the test of time, at least in my opinion. I think many others that are watching this video may share the same opinion too as well. But I never looked at the Bible as an instruction manual to seek stories and examples of success. And one of the examples of success was in Matthew 25, in the New Testament, uh, 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 Matthew 25 starts at verse 14. It's called the parable of the talents. So the parable of the talents goes like this. And I'll paraphrase here uh, throughout this video. But it begins with a master. He had lined up his servants. He's about to go on a long journey. And so he lines up his servants and says, listen, I'm about to go on a journey, but I want to see what you do with money. I want to give you talents, which is money. Talents is money. It's the equivalent factor. And he said, I'm going to give you money talents according to your ability. So line it up, one, two, three. One he gave five talents, the other one he gave two talents, and the other one he gave one talent according, according to scripture, according to his ability, underlined to his ability. i reference that here in a second. And then he left. And immediately, as soon as the master left, the one who got five talents, he went to work. Boom, five, he turned into another five. The same thing happened when they got two. So he's got two talents, boom, he immediately went to work, turned, to, turned into two. The one that got one talent, again, according to the ability, he got one talent, and what did he do? He didn't turn one into another one. He turned one, and he was fearful, and he buried it in the ground. He buried it. Why? Operated out of fear. Make a long story short, the master returns. He says, what'd you do with my money? What'd you do with my talents? He says, master, I took the five talents, and immediately made another five talents, so I'm giving you a total of 10 talents back. Wow. Master says, my good and faithful servant, what you've done with the least, you'll be blessed with the most. To the one, he gave two talents, again, according to his ability. He says, what'd you do with my money? What'd you do with my talents? He says, listen, I took your two, and I made it to two as well. So here's a total of four talents back at you. Again, he says, wow, my good and faithful servant, what you've been trusted with the least, you'll be blessed with the most. And now the drama starts to increase. He goes, hey, you, the one I gave one. But basically, I gave you one talent according to his ability. Would you do my money? Would you do my talents? He says, Master, I know what type of guy you are. Again, I'm paraphrasing. He goes, I know what type of guy you are. You just make money out of nowhere. 
you create things, you make things happen. I, nobody knows how you do, but you just make things happen. I know the type of guy you are. And listen, man, I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid of the way you do things. And I just don't want to lose what you gave me. So instead of making one to one like the other two did, and I should have watched them, guess what he says? He says, he says in verse 25, I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. He says, see, here's what belongs to you. So he just returned him his one talent. Master replies, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, at least it would have gained some interest. That's what he's saying. That's easy. You should have put my money to work somehow, some way, even if you didn't want to do it. At least the bankers would have done something with it. They would have gotten some interest when I came back. And so what he does, he took that talent, he took the one talent he gave that servant, he gave it to the one who made the most with it, and he says this in this verse. Check this out. He says in verse 29, For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have abundance. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him. And here's the last part about this. He says, And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness when they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow. What an end to that parable. What an end to that story. So here's how I internalize it. By the way, these are the red words. These are the words, depending on what type of Bible you're reading. These are stories that Jesus talked about and shared. And when I'm reading this, here's how, here's how I take it. Here's how I take, and by the way, I love your opinion on it. But here's my five things that I took from it. When, when I read this for the very first time, I unpacked it and I analyzed every verse, every sentence, and how it applied to my life. Here's, here, here's where I was at a particular point in my life. I was divorced. I was a single father with three kids. I was so broke. I had like a four or 500 credit score. I had less than 200, 300 bucks in a bank at most. I had all my credit cards maxed. I was bad. I had three different jobs. I was a G. Lou Hood technician. I was an Olive Garden server. I was a YMC lifeguard. And then I was just starting my business in the insurance industry. And then this Bible verse, this Bible parable comes across my way. It's amazing how God works. And I'm reading this. I took five things from it. And these are some of the things. That, and by the way, let me share with you something I kept in my Bible from my broke moments. I actually kept an ATM receipt. I keep this ATM receipt. And maybe we'll show this, but uh, we'll show a visual of this. But I kept this ATM receipt because I remember there's a moment in my life where I was so broke. I was so broke. And I was like, man, let me just feed my kids. And I go to the ATM machine at, uh, at Dominic's when Dominic's was still around. And there's an ATM machine there with the ATM receipt still sticking out of it. And I was just curious how much money somebody before me took out of the ATM. Here I am. I'm just struggling to take $20. So I, I take this ATM receipt. Whoosh, I pull it. Boom. 500 bucks. Somebody before me took out $500, the daily maximum limit. And then on top of that, not only did they take out $500, but they left $114,000 still in the checking account. And this is at a moment in time where I was absolutely broke. So a couple things, man, I was going through at that moment. I was reading this Bible. Next thing you know, this ATM receipt. I said, Lee's Lord, you have a funny sense of humor. And uh, I started understanding what the good Lord was saying to me through scripture. Number one, don't operate out of fear. He says, listen, because you operated out of fear, he got cast out. Because he operated out of fear, he didn't learn from his buddies. One took two towns, made two towns. The other one made five from his original five towns. He wasn't asking questions. He was operating out of fear. He kept his lens closed, his mind closed, his heart closed. Everything was closed. He said, listen, man, I don't want to get in trouble, man. I'm just going to bury it in the ground. And when I'm looking at this guy, he got fired. He's not even a servant. And there's some people watching this video say, listen, I'm good, I'm good, but I operate out of fear. Listen, you may be on the radar, but you're not a servant. If you believe in the word, if you believe in the good book says about what you can do out of your life and you operate out of fear, well, guess what? You're not even a servant, in my opinion. I might be wrong. But when you're, when you're operating out of faith, you say, okay, I trust you. When you operate out of fear, you say, I don't trust you. Consider that. The second thing here, okay, because he didn't understand how to make more money, how to take this talents to grow, not only did he operate out of fear, but he didn't even earn interest. At least he could have put it in the bank. 
In other words, they weren't even saving money. They weren't investing money. They weren't allowing the seed, which is what money really is. Money is just a seed. It's capital. So, so you can allow it to grow. It's for me, I took money. It was capital into my business. I took 500 bucks. So in this video, I share with you how we took my seed of $500 and, and over my total of my career, we created a $45 million business out of it because I decided not to operate in fear. I decided to operate in faith and all of my money to earn and grow. And he said, listen, even if you were fearful, the easiest way for you to gain some confidence and for me as the master to start being happy, if you feel that in your heart of hearts that your money is merely a tool, that your money is merely currency, that you're just a steward of what the good Lord gives you, then you should be earning interest on your money. There should not be a scenario where we should be living paycheck to paycheck. We should not be uh, uh, living broke to broke. We should not be experiencing this wealth gap. But what, why are we? A lot of you say, well, man, it's the external factors, man. It's the external factors, man. Oh, dude, I totally get it. I was experiencing those same external factors too as well. But I didn't operate out of fear. I wasn't waiting for nobody to tell me to do something. I definitely wasn't waiting for my money not to earn any money. I was finding ways to make my money grow. And my encouragement to you, if you're watching this, my encouragement to you during this holiday season, please, if you want to have 2021 be the most financially prosperous year for you, you got to tuck money away, not operate in fear, and have your money earning interest. Allow it to grow, allow it to manifest. That could be a seed that, cre that creates a new harvest in your life. Number three, whew, this is a big one. If you don't know how to make that seed become a harvest in your life, keep in mind, he gave, the master gave talents according to their ability. And I'm asking myself this question when I was reading the scripture. I said, Jesus, Lord, what type of servant am I? Am I the one talent servant? Am I the two talent servant? Or am I the five talent servant? Because he gave them money according to their ability. And so check this out, guys. This is what the master said. Hmm, I'm not sure if I trust you, but here's one. Let me see what you do with it. Okay, let me give you one, one talent, one, give one opportunity. Give me, you give, I'll give you one dollar, hundred, whatever, whatever that scale is. The other one, he says, mm, I think I'll trust you a little bit more. Here's two talents. And the other servant says, dude, <clears throat> I know what you're doing. Here's five talents. I gave you the most. So think about this real quick. You have a relationship with the Lord, right? And the Lord gives you an opportunity. One opportunity. What do you do with it? You operate out of fear? Or does it place an abundance of opportunities your way? Does it place an abundance of clients and people and opportunities and doors opening for you because he knows that you know what to do with it. What is your ability? Have you assessed your ability? Have you assessed what to do with a thousand dollars, with five hundred dollars, with fifty thousand dollars? Because if you've been trusted with the least, then you will be blessed with the most. So do you know what to do with the least? According to your ability. Whoa, this is preaching now, isn't it? That's what the scripture's telling me. Number four, back to that point. Are you doing the most with the least? What exactly are you doing with the least? Are you living paycheck to paycheck? Are you spending more than what you have? Are you cutting away, slicing away some money to give, to tithe, to save? Are you, are you saying, okay, man, I, I got $1,000, but I'm gonna spend $1,500 thanks to credit cards? And hopefully next month I just pay off the interest of my monthly payments instead of actually paying off the whole credit card? Am I, am I, am I doing the most with what I have, with what I've been given? And if so, guess what? The master might come back from his journey and say, oh, you're a two-talent servant. Let me now give you five talents because you've done with the least. Now you're going to be blessed with the most. Guys, I don't have a college degree. I don't have a master's degree. I don't have a PhD. All I got is experience. And all I've done is just follow biblical principles in the Bible that's helped me see money in my actions and my business differently. Here's the crazy part. I go to church on Sundays. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. I'm, I'm not a pastor. And I'm not here to judge anybody. But here's my observation. I go to church on Sundays. And people put their arms out. Lord, bless me. Lord, bless me. Lord, bless me. And the moment they get in a parking lot, they forget what they're asked to be blessed with. They forget the testimony. They forget what they were asking for in church. They start operating back in fear again. Come Monday morning, they operate in fear again. But the Lord can't bless you because with the least he's given you, you're not doing anything about it. Whew. And maybe that's a talk and a conversation some of you don't want to hear, but perhaps need to hear. And maybe this is the video just to share and expose that to you. But if you want to be blessed with the most, you got to make sure you do with the least as much as, po as much you possibly can with what you know. And you're always asking questions. If you find yourself in a position of always asking questions like, okay, okay, why is this opportunity being put in front of me again? 
Why is somebody talking to me about saving and budgeting again? Why is somebody saying th something about life insurance again? Why is somebody saying about something about 401k again? Why is somebody saying about this again? It keeps happening in front of me all the time. You should be paying attention to it. It might be a sign that the good Lord is trying to tell you something. Let me ask you this question. I've asked this question multiple times. I get this from the Bible. How many of the last five or ten decisions have you made, especially right now through the holiday season? How many decisions have you made in the last five, ten decisions you've made have been related to money? And why are they related to money? You know what I always say? If you place a decision in front of you and you extract money from the decision, that exposes then the pure decision you're about to make. For example, I want to buy this for somebody. I want to get this one because I want to give them to his gift, but I don't have the money. That's not the pure decision. If you had your heart and eyes on something, man, I want to give that to a gift as somebody. They need to be blessed with this. I need to give them an opportunity. Guess what? You should give it to them, but you don't do it because you don't have the money. See, that's a problem. And that's a question that you need to find answers to in, in 2021. So therefore, you start removing money from the equation because now you can get to the character of the decision in that process. Last but not least. <laughs> oh, man, you guys might not want to hear this one. And you thought, you thought this was just a warm bath type of biblical conversation. Now, I'm telling you this, man. I told you at the beginning. I'm not a pastor. I'm a preacher. This is how I interpret the Bible. The, the Bible exposes things that goes on in my life. It has to be more than me just being a good person. Because in this scripture, in this parable, these servants who took the two talents and five talents, what did they do? Did they, oh, let me get a vacation. Let me just go hang out. Let me wait until after the holidays until I start getting to work. You know, you hear that excuse? Yeah, let me just get my New Year's resolution on January 1st. Why not now? Why not immediately? Why do you got to wait for the holidays? Let me, get, let me do it over the weekend. Let me get it done next week. Back to visiting the land of procrastination where dreams go to die. Where blessings and talents that you've been given with go to die because you decide to do it tomorrow. Because these guys, these, these servants, whether it be male or female, they got to work immediately, right away. Oh, master, thank you so much. Boom. Okay, let me go make my two towns and two more towns. Awesome. I'm ready for my master to come back. I said, Lord, I... I, I, I've been blessed with two towns and take to two towns and I want to bless you right back, sir. Awesome. Five towns. Made five towns. You went to work immediately. You didn't wait for after vacation, after holiday break, next, next week, next month. Hopefully whenever the master gets back a couple days in, in advance before the deadline, do you operate that way? No. They were given a command. What you've been given with the least, you bless, you'll be blessed with with the most because they got to work immediately. Woo! Probably not the message you were looking to hear, but uh, you may not want to be turning into these uh, biblicals, biblical conversations with me on Sunday mornings. But this is how I pursue the Bible, and I, this is serious business to me, because this is wisdom that has transcended the test of time that operates in my life, and hopefully might operate in your life. And these are the biblical principles and things that I had to see myself for me to say, this is a mirror, this is a reflection of a mirror that was speaking right back to me. Because I was in operating in these four or five different things. Once I decided to unpack these, this, this parable and these, these points and started to apply them immediately into my life, guess what? My life started to change. It wasn't immediate. It wasn't automatic. It was a process. It wasn't overnight. It took time. Why? Because I needed to shed myself of old habits and start applying myself with new habits because if I want new habits, I want new money. I got to have old habits and old money leave me so I can make new money. I can make room for the true blessing that's coming my way. So I hope the same thing for to you as well. But before I let you go, we're going to have a quick contest here. And uh, we're going to ask you to fill in the blank with this question. But uh, we're going to give you a first generation cash flow millionaire shirt from the seven figure squad store to the person, the first three people that answer this question in the comment section below, whether it's on Facebook or on YouTube answer this question. Are you ready? I will become a millionaire when I fill in your best answer. I will become a millionaire when I fill in your best answer from the five points I just covered here in the parable of talents here in Matthew 25 of the Bible. Cannot wait to hear what you guys got to say. Can I hear what you guys have to let me know whether you agreed with me or you disagreed with me, whether you, uh, whether you, you thought differently about uh, this uh, parable of the talents. I want to know your perspective. I want to know what your angle is when you read the parable of the talents of Matthew 25. So, guys, if you've been watching us on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. 
If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. So again, this is Vlogmas of 2020. Every day you're gonna get an episode from us to you to give back to our Seven Fear Squad community every day all the way until the 24th of December of 2020. That being said, guys, from the Money Smart Casa, I'm your Money Smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys.